So it was just any normal day. I was actually working um, and I had some friends contact me saying that they were coming into Austin. You know, they are very persistent like friends are and they just wanted me to come out and I was just like, well, it's okay. I'll just go out for a little bit and have a little bit of fun with my friends since I don't get to see them very often. But, you know, I met up with my friends at a bar and just had some drinks and, you know, still just kind of casually drinking and having fun and then we went to another bar and, you know, still just kind of had, I probably had, you know, five, five or six drinks maybe. And then I felt like, you know, I have to work tomorrow so, you know, I can go home. It's okay, I felt good enough to go home. So I left on my own and you know everything was fine and I was just almost to my apartment. I probably had like less than a quarter of a mile to go and then I hit someone. Just knowing that you, you know, ruin somebody's life, not just them but you know their family, their friends, I think that's um, I just have a lot of shame um, from all of that. Kip, she had a big personality. Talkative, non-stop talking. Um, she loved people. Uh, she loved her siblings. She loved her family. Um, she loved school. She, she didn't miss a lot of days of school. Even when she was sick, she wanted to go to school. Kia was very unique, very smart. Um, she was, uh, I always say she was born before her time. She, as young as she was, she still was like the glue because of her personality and because she loved us so. And it didn't matter if you was upset with her, it didn't matter. She would come to you later. She would always, my oldest daughter, she would say, oh, you're, are you still mad at me? Do you want me to cook for you? You know, or even with my mom, she would say, oh, Granny, I love you. You know, she just had a, a big personality. And that night, what happened is that she went out trying to be a social worker. One of her friends was having this problem with her mom. And she asked her mom if she'd go downstairs with the other girls to, you know, to wait on this young lady. And she was older than Kia, but like I said, Kia was more mature for her age. So she went downstairs and that's when the accident happened. Um, when she was, she was on the sidewalk and when the lady hit her, it, it threw her, like my mom said, it threw her against the fence. Huh? And um, when her, mm -hmm. the girls that were with her, when they came and got me, I, we were in the apartments. And mm -hmm. the accident happened right on the sidewalk by the apartments. And um, when I came down, what? I saw her laying there and this guy was holding her and you can just see uh -huh. the blood everywhere. When I seen the, what happened, mm -hmm. the fence, that was bent and I thought a car did it. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, that car really did hit that fence. And they said, no, it wasn't a car. It was Kia Head. And I remember waking up like at five o'clock in the morning and my uncle and my grandma were talking about it. And I thought it was a dream, but, and then when I went back to sleep, I woke up and found out that it wasn't a dream. And I, I went to go see my sister. They were gonna give her 30 minutes what yeah. after we, they took off life support, they were gonna give her 30 minutes to live. Yeah. And when we did take it off, the day we did take it off, um, she, she was breathing on her own. She suffered from a traumatic brain injury. Um, she had several fractures. Um, she, she had more injury to the right side of her brain. So at that time, that this particular doctor thought, okay, she may talk, mm -hmm. and but she won't walk. 
But then later on, they gave her, they gave up. They said, no, she's not going to be, be able to do any of those things. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, we were sent home for her. She was sent home to pass because nobody knew what else to do with her. But she did the opposite. <laughs> So with the, the impact of the victim and the, the victim's families, you, you have a, a person who is a true victim in this case, person either driving home from the grocery store, from work, minding their own business, driving down the roadway, and then they are impacted by somebody else's bad decision, which would be a drunk driver uh, crashing into them. So then, you know, heaven forbid it's loss of life, and then the family of the victim has to deal with that for the rest of their lives, that they lost someone in a senseless crash. Uh, And then if the person's seriously injured, that pain goes on forever, because now you're talking about not only the, the loss of this person's future possibly, but then the medical bills associated with this can impact that family for a long, long time, because you know, medical bills aren't cheap, and this person could have extensive medical problems for the rest of their lives that are going to have to be tended to. So this one person's bad decision, the intoxicated driver, has now impacted not only the victim, but then the victim's family and everybody that was close to that victim because they're obviously going to rally around the victim if they're a living survivor, uh, but then have serious medical issues from that point forward. So it's a far-reaching impact of one senseless, useless mistake. Um, And so we are just working on communicating any way we can. At first, it was just to see. We weren't really sure how much brain function there was, and we just wanted to see if we could get her to communicate in any way, shape, or form, which started with accessing any sort of switch. Let's have another rock star day, okay? Hi, beautiful. Are you ready? You're going to hit this. That one. I'm going to ask you, which one is Mr. D? This one? Look at it. I know. You like this one. Yep, this one? Or this one? Hit that switch for me, girl. Say, that one's Mr. D. That one. That one. Very good. The next step would be moving back up to those two different switches. Um, And then we'll just keep going from there. She obviously has a big personality and from what I understand a lot of her old personality from before the accident is still very much here. I didn't know her before but uh, yeah she's sassy still. She definitely has favorite music from before. Uh, Favorite colors have been the same so there is some carryover which has been really interesting to see um, and be a part of. So she's a miracle and the more we work with her, the more we're going to get out of her. And I think the longer we've come from the accident to now, um, yeah, yeah, the more IKEA we're getting. So it's exciting to be a part of this process with her. Our officers make arrests every day that nobody knows about. And if you're under 21 and you have any alcohol in your system and you're stopped, you will go to jail for the very least DUI. I have worked a number of cases where there's been, um, where there's a child dead in the car as a result of DWI um, or maimed, they've got bones sticking out. And and it's, like I said, it affects everybody. It affects the paramedics, it affects the firemen, it affects the police officers. I can remember every single case um, and where it happened and what the injuries were. Um, on the on these DWI crashes where these kids are, are maimed or, or dead and um, it'll stay with me forever. Uh, and if you're under 21, I know the temptations out there. You know, the only person who decides whether you're going to take that drink when it's in your hand is you. Um, 
kids' brains in the first place are not done developing. Um, and when you add alcohol into that mix, it just compounds the whole thing into a disaster. Um, I know as a parent of a junior in high school, I would much rather get a phone call at two in the morning saying, mom, I'm drunk, come get me, than a phone call from the police or a knock on the door stating that she's dead or she's killed somebody else. When you get to that age, just really understand what you're gonna be doing. Um, even at 21, 50, or whatever age you are, be responsible. Think first. When you're drinking that first drink, ask yourself, should I take another one? Don't let your friends drive when you know they're, they have been drinking. You see it all the time where kids are drinking and they jump in a car and you would hate you would hate to be the person responsible for causing somebody's death or somebody's injury or just imagine how your family would feel if something happened to you I mean just take the time take the time out to drive safe and be safe